Hello, and welcome to In the Studio. I'm your sometimes host, Matt Blake, and I've got a great treat for you today. We're going to be talking about the new Harmony Jazz Band out of Davis. We have some footage of them live at the Davis Craft and Vintage Fair. Let's watch that. <laughs> So, the new Harmony Jazz Band, and that was some footage from the Davis Craft and Vintage Fair in Central Park. Tell me, uh, what are you guys all about? Well, you know, we're basically uh, jazz aficionados, people who love jazz and love to play jazz and looking for uh, a way to provide live music to the community. I, I'm sorry, uh, I just realized I got so excited about talking to you guys, I forgot to introduce you. Oh, okay. Uh, we've got Eric and Mike with me, the founder, uh, Michael Hearn, of the New Harmony Jazz Band. Thanks, man. And Thanks. And plays the trumpet. Yeah. Uh, and Eric, what is your last name? Zilbert. Z Eric Zilbert, who plays the coronet. Coronet, which yes. is like a smaller version of the trumpet. Ah, okay. Very nice. Um, and so bringing music to Davis and, and people Right, around. so, you know, uh, it's very expensive to have a show with like an 11 piece uh, jazz band. Um, and so what we try to do is make it possible for various community events to have live jazz. And you know, in a way it's sort of like if baseball was no longer televised mm. in a popular sport, but a group of uh, like-minded people got together to do an exhibition baseball game. We do exhibitions of jazz and sometimes okay. it feels very much like we're a performance art piece. So. Very cool. And then do you usually play in a large group? Is it usually an 11 piece ensemble? It, it all depends mm. on uh, what the, the need is for the gig. Uh, we recently played with a uh, five piece ensemble for uh, a Mardi Gras type uh, party for a community organization. And then, yeah, we will show up with 14 people sometimes uh, for, the, for the right gig. Uh, we played uh, uh, swing dance music for the uh, swing dance club, and there we came with a full-on, you know, Benny Goodman orchestra, practically. Very nice. So we have uh, probably on the order of 15, 60 members, maybe 25 people have gone uh, through the band over the last five years. And, uh, you know, whatever the traffic will bear, we'll, we'll put something together to, uh, to make it happen. All right. So over the last five years, uh, tell me more about your history. Have you been around for a while? Well, yeah, we've been around at least five years. And I'd say that, uh, you know, we owe uh, the existence of the band really to the Woodland Community Band where Mike and I met. And we noodled around playing some mm -hmm. jazz once in a while. Concert and, music, concert band music. And really, we were wanting to have a jazz band. And Mike was a music student at the university at the time. He just graduated with his mm -hmm. bachelor's degree in music. And he was able to bring in some additional musicians. And we knew some other people at that band. And so uh, we started playing. And then the, vintage, the Craft and Vintage Fair has given us a place to perform uh, for the last several years that's really helped, you know, uh, promote our practicing and getting together and keeping members in the band. But there have been a lot of students in the band, there's been some faculty in the band, and uh, just people from the community. We have currently a pianist and a vocalist who come all the way from Marysville to participate. Oh, wow. And, and remind me, the Craft and Vintage Fair here in Davis is once a month, it's in On Central Sunday, Park. it's the first Sunday of the month generally, though they beef it up a little bit in uh, November and December around the holidays. So we have uh, two, uh, two shows uh, there at that time of year. Okay, great. And so if people wanted to see the band, they could go there. How else could they get in touch with you? Um, we play on uh, every last Friday of the month at John Natsoulis Gallery in something called uh, Friday Jazz Night. Nice. And, then, uh, and it's kind of jazz and jazz education together. And then um, we also uh, have a, a Facebook page, New Harmony Jazz Band, where you can uh, see footage of us, or listen to cuts, and also 
figure out where we're going next. All right. Um, and so we can talk about where you're going next, but how about some highlights of where you've been? What have you guys done? Oh, uh, you know, every year we play the 4th of July uh, show for Woodland, the city of Woodland. Right. So um, we play in the gazebo in the park there, and all the kids come by on their bicycles and things, you know, as part of the parade. Mm -hmm. And we provide uh, a couple hours of entertainment on uh, the 4th of July afternoon. That's been great. I mentioned... Uh, the uh, the swing group where we've played uh, for their you know annual event uh, mm -hmm. whatever um, and you know we've done uh, one of the organizations that's been very supportive of us is the mutual housing uh, cooperative we've played for a couple of their events uh, we even played for Daryl Steinberg once and uh, Gear, John Gearmany's office also right and John Gearmany's office of course yeah we I mean primarily we do a lot of community work mm -hmm. so we we put ourselves out there. That's to provide you know, jazz for anybody. Jazz yeah, for anybody. I like and, that. Yeah, we pro pretty much, you know, do it for, you know, gas money. <laughs> <We're>, everything <laughs> is, it's totally nonprofit. I, I can guarantee that as the treasurer. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're just trying to cover people's expenses and we'll, we'll take mm -hmm. whatever, you know, the, the organization, you know, can afford in terms of support. But definitely not what it would cost, you know, to do private uh, Type of work, and also we uh, try not to step on the toes of professional musicians. You know, we don't uh, take weddings and things like that. You know, uh, it's, it's intended for you know community purpose, where pretty much anybody could come and hear us. Oh, that's great, that's great. And then, so what is next? Where do you guys see yourselves moving next? We want to play more. We want to play more. Well, yeah, and, and really uh, work on, like just uh, last night we were working on an acoustic version of the band, uh, six members who are going to play uh, this coming uh, Saturday at the Davis Farmer's Market uh, from 9 to 12. And so that required, you know, some rethinking of the arrangements and stuff. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, retiring in a, in a couple of years here and I would like to arrange jazz music for a band yeah, okay. and so these would be my guinea pigs for arrangements that I might uh, produce and I know Michael has interests in furthering his music career and oh yeah the band can, can do that as well quite much you know I, as Eric said I'm a graduate from UC Davis mm -hmm. with a music degree so I can arrange and write and I plan to okay. tremendously tremendously yeah and that's one of the great gifts about living in Davis also is we have so many UC Davis students that contribute in large ways and have played with us. Mm -hmm. Different members have, and there's an interaction that we've liked quite often okay. within the community. But we've, you know, we've had musicians as young as 19, and up until recently, we had a drummer who was well in his 80s. And he literally played in the big swing dancer. Played with Count Basie. Yeah, oh, that's cool. so yeah, you know it's uh, yeah. everything's out there, uh, you know, in the community to to work with, and uh, we do it for the fun of it. It's just yeah. for me, it's the one of the funnest things I do. Oh, that's <laughs> we love jazz. We love jazz. The interaction between the community and playing in concerts and and all that is incredible. It's 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 a beautiful thing to be able to go out and perform and do music and. Yeah. And get the response that we get. From, yeah, and so do you the, often find, like, when you're playing, um, you know, in Central Park, something like that, are you, are you playing off the crowd? Are you improvising a lot? Or, you know, we, we really feature a lot of improvisation. Mm -hmm. I think most of the band members love jazz because they love the chance to really express themselves, you know, personally in the music. We, you know, are always, there's always a tension between how arranged should it be and how free form should it be. And we're trying to put together something that sounds good most of the time. Okay. You know, the idea of new harmony, you know, what's a new harmony? How many harmonies are there? Well, believe me, you listen to us, you'll hear some harmonies you may <laughs> never have heard before. <laughs> That's great. Uh, depending on who shows up and what we're playing. But um, we are, you know, very well received for the most part. But it is extraordinary to me how uh, many people can just walk by and not even and stop it and listen or look for a minute to the band. How live music is somehow uh, not a remarkable thing. The little kids get it. Little kids stop and just their jaws drop open and they look at the trumpets and the instruments and they go, what is this? Yeah. But uh, for, for many adults, they're kind of jaded, you know, they're trot on by. It's an old thing and that's very interesting because we do play jazz 
a sort like Louis Armstrong. We've been known to play Louis Armstrong numbers as well as modern pieces of jazz. So we try to, you know, do all aspects of jazz, and we're that talented to be able to do that to some extent as a community band. But Eric's right. I mean, the response from the audiences different times is very unique, very good. We get people to dance sometimes, mm. you know, but the, the avenue of live music in the community is really a, a, a beneficial thing that we like doing. Yeah, one of the greatest endorsements is being called back to do something over and over. Yeah. Right, so we've, been, we've done... What the Fourth of July, four or five years running? Yeah, in Woodland. yeah, through the city of Woodland. And then what's the uh, the International Festival uh, in Central Park? We've played yeah. that three, four times now. So you know, we we finish up the festival and represent American music uh, in, in playing jazz, and so that's really uh, a fun as well. But you know, Mike's right. We play the whole book going back. You know. Uh, to W.C. Handy in the early part of you know the 20th century, all the way through Miles you know, Davis, Miles Davis, yeah. Antonio Carlos Jobim, and and Latin jazz. You know we're not uh, too constrained, and like I said, we'll we'll do big band swing numbers and little foxtrot numbers and everything in between. And are you two primarily the ones coming up with those ideas, or is it really the whole band coming together? No, to, you know, we have, we literally have had like a, a separate music director to think about, you know, putting together the shows and, and whatnot, but we, we all contribute to some degree. Like last night, I would say there were two of us, the clarinet player and myself, who were really trying to work out how these acoustic pieces were going to go. You know, we, we trimmed down the, the leads on it so there wouldn't, be overwhelming horns, you know, relative to the the bass and the guitar, because they're not using any amplification, right. and that's the cool thing and the challenging thing about like this show coming up is, no amps, guys. So figure out how to do it, yeah. and that's what makes it fun. Yeah, it really. I mean, it really sounds like it is sort of of the community and for the community, right? Which really makes I mean, it's. It makes it harmonious, I suppose. Yes. <laughs> a new harmony. And then we have our rehearsals at, you know, the new Harmony uh, Housing Collective where Mike lives. And so, yeah. you know, that too has been a wonderful thing because if you're a band like us, finding rehearsal spaces is quite tough. And so, Very again, to have, you know, a community organization that supports us, uh, a family party there takes precedent over us. But when it's not being used, uh, we, we do have access to it and we really appreciate mm -hmm. that. That's great. And so how often do you get together and practice? And is it leading up to a gig, or do you have a regular rehearsal well, schedule? Well, it be leading up to a gig, but we try to meet probably regularly twice a month. Oh, great. Yeah, but there, there are other aspects of getting together, but, you know, we about that. Yeah. I mean, we don't rehearse daily or even weekly primarily, but we do on a regular basis get together. Rehearse. Kind of every other Sunday sort of thing when yeah. we can swing it. Yeah. And members of the band will have a post, like Eric was saying. We have a member who's the music director. He'll put together the set list. He'll do all those things. Uh, I'm the manager. Eric's the treasurer. Co-founder also. And we have different, like, uh, posts in the band. So it's really um, member-oriented to contribute, to put things together, you know. Yeah. So it's really good in that way. Oh, it sounds yeah. great. It's very like, healthy. Yeah, it sounds yeah. very healthy. And so, so how much turnover do you have? I don't know if turnover is the right word. But a couple yeah. people a year. Yeah. So, a couple people a year. Okay. Not much. Only because of their changes primarily. Maybe they move on. Sure. Or we we got a great bunch of people. You know, we, we always get along. Uh, we work through things. There's very rarely some sort of dissonance that can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we just recently added a vocalist. And she's great. She's one of the members that Eric mentioned comes from Marysville, the city, and she's incredible. Yeah. That's really great. So it's a real good contributing factor each member does. All right. And so do you play trumpet because trumpet is your favorite, and do you play coronet because coronet is your favorite, or how, how, how are those distinct? <laughs> we have a battle. We have a battle. Well. I, I play coronet because I find the coronet is more uh, flexible in terms of playing jazz, that I can bend notes and do things with the horn that I couldn't do with a regular trumpet so much. But okay. uh, restricts the range a little bit and things. But yeah, I play it because it's my funnest thing to play. I think I sound good on it, too. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Eric. I play trumpet mainly because I was brought up on it. Mm -hmm. Louis Armstrong started on coronet. 
and many, many virtuosos never touched a trumpet. They always had a cornet. So the difference, largely sometimes, is the sound, like Eric says. It's a great sound, cornet is. It's beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, and it sounds like not just the cornet, not just the trumpet, but right. the, whole band, the whole band together sounds great. Yeah, yeah right. Great. And, the, you know, the mix changes depending who's there, who can attend, what the purpose of the gig is, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, people, new people come to rehearsals and we try out with them and see if they can fit with our current uh, organization, as it were. And sometimes they, they join us and sometimes they don't. But, you know, we have to keep it sort of to a manageable size. But like I said, it fluctuates. And Matt, a lot of the events we play for are community free events, like the fair of such, free. Uh, the uh, the uh, concert we do for John Atzul's monthly is free to the community. Yeah. So we really try to emphasize that. But we do do other things, but primarily that's what would be the cost. Yeah, it's great. It's Seriously. great that you're out there. And like I said, I think f uh, sort of of the community and for the community, and it's great. So <laughs> get out community. there and uh, <laughs> definitely check out the new Harmony Jazz Band here in Davis uh, at Woodlud. And uh, thank you for joining me in the studio, guys. Thanks. It was, it was really a, pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you, Matt, yeah. for having us. Thank Thanks. you for being here.